You've tuned in to the Top 10 Garden Show with garden expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation daily as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Or visit face-to-face throughout the week where he can be found at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. So I started out the show by just sharing I had put a few plants in the ground. So a couple 15-gallon Arizona cypress, of a, a blue atlas cedar, which is uh, the statehood tree down on the Prescott Courthouse Square. Uh, over 100 years ago, uh, at our state's founding, we, we planted a pair of blue atlas cedars there. And they're still there, and they're ancient. They're very tall. I think they're the second tallest tree on the Courthouse Square. The tallest tree by far, it overshoots it by another 20, 30 feet, is a redwood, believe it or not. It's on the back side of the courthouse, uh, closer to where the uh, Chamber of Commerce is, where the old city hall is over there. You'll see a, a very large redwood tree, surprisingly enough. They do grow here. So I've got a weeping redwood in my backyard. Very rare plant, but uh, I, I know the person that developed it, friend. Say, hey, you want one? Said, I'd love that. It'd be great. It's just thrived. It's now probably 40 feet tall. It's huge. It's, it's funky looking. It's Dr. Seuss looking. But conifers, we are surrounded by conifer, conifer forests or evergreen forests. So ponderosas, pinion pines, lots of juniper varieties, Arizona cypress. These are all natives of ours. Colorado spruce up on the ridgelines. Uh, firs up on the ridgelines. They just love to grow here. And so they adapt well. And so I put a few more in. I thought I would share just, uh, I've got some, I know I live up in the Prescott Heights, Prescott Lakes area. So I overlook the Dells. So I can see granite Dells from our decks and patios. And so up in that region, the soil is ridiculously hard. I mean, just crazy clay soil. I mean, like you jump, I'm a big man. So I'm well over six foot, well over 200 pounds. I'm jumping on a brand new razorback shovel, new blade. It's not dull. I mean, and I'm going in like an inch. So I'm digging these holes an inch at a time, jumping on this thing. It's a workout. I don't have to get on the uh, treadmill <laughs> that morning because I'm jumping on this shovel, but I got the holes in. It worked out. I thought I'd share a couple insider tips. Just there's some tricks to digging a hole in very hard soil. Now I own a 35 pound jackhammer and a 70 pound. So we've done planting for years. I'm an old landscaper, just so I'm used to, but I don't like breaking out that heavy equipment. I have to have to drag an electrical cord. They're, they're heavy as all get out. And then they beat the living daylights out. If I can, I would far much rather just do it with a shovel. Maybe a pick, maybe if I have to a digging bar, if I can do it just with a pick or just a shovel or just a shovel, I'll do it that way because it's just easier than hauling all that stuff back there. Here's the insider tip. The mistake I find with, with rookie moves is you dig in your hole. It's going to be three times as wide, same depth. Okay. That's, that's the basic parameter. We've got handouts on that. You can, we will, every time you buy a tree or shrub, you get this handout on here's how you plant. Here's a stuff, but, but here they don't tell you how to dig the actual hole, physical hole. Now, this is going to be for you, for you folks that have been gardening for a lot of years. You've 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 gardened in hard pan. You already know this, but this is for you, maybe you folks maybe knew the area. So you tend to dig from the you're jumping on it, you get that first layer of soil, which is usually pretty easy, and then it gets harder from there. You're you're kind of going around the radius digging your hole. That's not the way to dig in hard soil. So you don't dig from the outer edge and push in. So you're thinking that gets you a funnel shaped. And then you're having to break out the digging bar, the picks to get the side holes, the side hole, you know, ex expanded some. So it's easier. It makes sense. But what I do is I'll tend to dig. And I don't know if I can explain this well enough. I'm going daisy wheel around the hole. So I'm doing from the outer edge. Once I define my hole, I'm now not. The, the blade is not pointing towards the inside or the middle of the hole. It's pointing towards the, the outer edges. So the, the I'm right-handed. So the right-hand side of the shovel is facing the outside edge of that planting hole. Now I'm jumping on it and I get a much easier way to dig a, instead of a funnel, 
an actual planting hole with side with side walls without having to break the pick out so much. And it, it works really well, especially if there's no rocks. So one of these holes, man, I, I hit a boulder, not a boulder, maybe, maybe a, a toaster size rock. A boulder is like really big, but I could easily loosen it up, lift it out, get it out of the way. You know, that, that was a pain. I had to get the shovel to dig around it, trying to, to open this up. But once I got that rock out of there, I kept going with this daisy wheel, kind of like a spoke of a bike. I've got the shovel on each one of those spokes and I'm just, it doesn't, it, it makes the hole go deeper, easier, faster, more consistent without having to break out heavier equipment. It's so easy to go with that radius and have the shovel kind of scooch in and try to, on, with, with heavy soil, hard soil, it just wants to slide to the middle. So you end up with this cone-shaped hole and you're, now how am I going to dig the sides out? Think of a bicycle. Just spikes, bicycle spokes, and it just makes it easier for it to get down. I know this is super, super easy going, Ken, you're it's ridiculous. I can't believe I tuned into this. But if you haven't dug, if you don't have a lot of practice with it, kind of go, oh, well, that's, that kind of makes sense. Well, they don't teach you. I can't Google. I can't ask the Google machine to tell me how to do that. But I can tune into the Mountain Gardener, and Ken will help you. So throughout the week, uh, I'm here. I can help you with more. I've got the handout. We got more segments right after this, though. Don't go anywhere. Your yard will turn heads with stunning evergreen shrubs from Waters Garden Center. Waters grows greener shrubs for year-round interest, as well as blooming shrubs for pops of color in spring. Attract birds with a tall privacy hedge and the berries that follow. Plus, winter evergreens are easier to grow than other plants. No matter your landscape, we have the perfect shrubs for a greener winter. Visit Waters Garden Center in Prescott or online at watersgardencenter.com. The Top 10 Gardener, your source for timely garden advice, seasonally correct for the garden. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. 